Hello and welcome back to all of you. Um, this is our last session for today and I'd like to remind you to download the homework before you sign off after this. Yes, that's right, I did say homework. Uh, on the site navigation, if you click the homework button, uh, you can download a PDF and it is a self-assessment and there's also a video there to help you walk through the process. Uh, and the purpose is just to help you think about your potential career transitions. Uh, we do recommend completing it at the end of today because it'll help set you up for success tomorrow. Um, and now it looks like our attendee levels are pretty good and stabling off. So I'll jump right into our final session for the day, diversifying op economies and changing opportunities. I'd like to introduce Mary Moran, President and CEO of Calgary Economic Development. Mary joined Calgary Economic Development as Vice President of Marketing, Communications and Research in 2010. And she's brought extensive leadership experience in the development of strategy, marketing, stakeholder relations, and fund development with leading companies, including TELUS, Delta Hotels, Canadian Airlines, and Wardair. I don't know if I said that right, Mary. Uh, since becoming pre president and CEO in 2015, her leadership has placed greater focus on Calgary's competitiveness in the new economy in the areas of talent development, innovation, placemaking, and the business environment. Welcome, Mary, and thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, it's a real thrill, and of course, I prefer to see you all in person, um, but hopefully some of you in the audience know who Ward Air was. Um, and if so, I'm in good company because uh, that was quite a few years ago in the Canadian airline industry, but probably one of the better airlines. Not as good as WestJet, but that's a whole other story. But um, just a real thrill to be here. And, and certainly I'd like to congratulate Carol Howes and the, and the team uh, at Petro LMI, because I think they put together a terrific lineup of speakers to address the career transition issues for displaced workers. Um, and certainly Calgary Economic Development feels very fortunate to be able to collaborate with a partner like Petro LMI, June, June Wormworth Nichols or JWN now Energy and the Government of Canada on these initiatives um, to pursue virtual career exploration forum. I saw that Lance Mortlock from EY was on a panel earlier today and I'm sure you got a lot out of Lance, we had worked with him on uh, the digital transformation. So there's lots of there was lots of focus on that study that we did on our economy and our industrial sectors. And he was very instrumental in getting us uh, set off in the right direction for what the future of Calgary holds. I also see that you uh, had a great choice for an opening keynote speaker with uh, Kevin, Kevin Krauser, uh, formerly of Beaver Driven, dr Drilling, sorry, and um, now of Avatar Innovations. And I was at the launch for Avatar Innovations with Kevin and his partners last fall. And I said that it was a great example of collaborations by companies, industry associations, and post-secondaries that will drive innovation in energy and clean tech here in Calgary. And I believe that Kevin is off to a roaring start and uh, definitely is determined to change uh, not just our economy, but also the energy industry. My job today is going to be giving you our perspective uh, on where Calgary's economy is going and what it's likely to mean for current and future generations for Calgarians. I will also address what it means for people like those of you on this call or on this webinar um, who have been displaced from their jobs and are looking for a mid-career transition. Because economic development encompasses a lot of things, but it is first and foremost about creating opportunities for people. The last year has certainly taken an enormous toll on people across Canada and especially here in Calgary. And I speak on behalf of our organization when I say our hearts go out to everyone who has been experiencing a personal tragedy from COVID. And certainly we are immensely grateful for all of the hard work and relentless work that our healthcare and frontline workers have been doing to keep us safe. I'm also concerned about small business owners who are working day and night just to keep the doors open when they can be open. And also companies of all sizes and shapes that are, are continuing to struggle. And in particular, I wanna recognize the challenges that families are facing who suddenly have family members who are out of work. I know this includes a lot of people on this call. 
the immense scope of challenges facing so many Calgarians has convinced me that the work at Calgary Economic Development is doing is more important now than it has been in any time in our 20 year history. Now the world has turned upside down in this last year. There is no denying that. In addition to the global health crisis, we face three distinct, distinct challenges in Calgary. There is the long-term restructuring of the oil and gas industry worldwide. There's the lingering impact from the oil price war that started about this time last year between Saudi Arabia and Russia. And of course, there's the impact of COVID that has weakened demand in many of our key sectors from energy, but also to retail, to travel, and to hospitality. The impacts have been staggering. In the last year, Calgary has experienced record high unemployment, record high office space, and a historic decline in GDP. Our challenges were large and complex before COVID, and now they are even more complex. More troubling to me, or the most troubling to me, is the relentless high unemployment that we're experiencing. It's an absolute tragedy that so many young, highly educated, worldly, talented people are on the sidelines in our economy. And this isn't just a tragedy for Calgary, this is a tragedy for Alberta, and it's a tragedy for our province. Both of which who could benefit so much from the skills that these people have to offer. Now to get people back to work, we must adapt to the new economic reality. What we're experiencing is more than a restructuring or a run of the mill recession. There is a global paradigm shift underway around digital transformation. In Calgary, it means we need to reimagine existing industries and embrace new opportunities to create a stronger and more resilient economy. Now, there are reasons for optimism. I know that all sounds like doom and gloom, but there are reasons to be optimistic. The signs of our eventual recovery are there. They may be eclipsed by our immediate challenges, but they are there. And from my vantage point, I have the great fortune of working around enterprising Calgarians every single day. And I'm re reminded often that this city remains opportunity rich. The world is certainly transforming at a scale and a speed that we have never seen before. Our accepted assumptions are being challenged on everything from social justice to our economy to the way we work. And at the same time, we are pushing limits of technology beyond what was possible even a few years ago. Studies show the adoption rate for digital technologies accelerated more quickly last year than it had in the previous two decades. We can't be intimidated by this digitization. However, it is forcing us to shift our way of thinking. Three years ago, our community set the foundation for understanding what digital transformation would mean in our economy and created a strategy called Calgary in the new economy. Today, it is more relevant than ever. The vision for Calgary is to be the city that leads the digital transformation of our Canadian industrial sectors. We wanna be the city of choice for the brightest people to come here and to stay here and embrace advanced technologies to solve some of the world's biggest challenges, delivering cleaner energy, safer and secure food supply, the more efficient uh, movement of goods and people and increasingly so better health solutions. And when I talk to companies around the world about Calgary, we have a compelling story to tell. We are a community of problem solvers. We always have been. We are inclusive, we're innovative, and we're entrepreneurial. We have one of the youngest, most culturally diverse, and highly educated populations in Canada. Over 120 languages are spoken here, and we've welcomed people from more than 150 countries. And we are leading the digital transformation for Canada's industrial sectors. We are a global center of excellence for all things energy, but we're also more than that. And as we battle for our energy industry on the global and national stage, 
there are bellwether signs of positivity everywhere. For instance, we had four billion dollar deals. That's four individual billion dollar deals for home growing Calgary companies in the last 24 months. No other city in Canada can claim that. The latest the last fall was Benevity, a global leader in corporate purpose cloud software. And before that, there was Solium Capital in FinTech, Harvest Therapeutics in uh, Health, and RS Energy Group in data analytics. It shouldn't be a surprise then that we are seeing record levels of venture capital flow into our city. We had $286 million in venture capital investment through the first nine months of 2020. And the most notable thing, while we were growing venture capital, cities like Vancouver, Montreal, and Toronto saw a decline in investment. It says investors are starting to pay attention to what is happening here and the smart money is placing its bets on Calgary. This city is a leader in taking the biggest technical, environmental and social challenges on. As the issues become more challenging and more complex, I strongly believe that the world needs more can can of Canada's technically advanced and responsible produced energy. You heard it with Kevin this morning. This is the start of a new chapter in the Canadian oil and gas uh, story. And Avatar and many others are working to ensure our oil and gas industry will continue to play a leading role in the transition to a lower carbon energy. And it will be innovation and technology that drives that progress. Digital transformation is changing all aspects of our lives and the impact on the industrial sectors Things that we excel at is absolutely profound. And we're seeing it here in Calgary. Companies that embrace digital transformation are more predictive, more productive, and more competitive. And I'm confident that they will be the disruptors in this rapidly changing world, not the disrupted. Digital transformation isn't waiting for anyone. And in Calgary, we're already on the road to the digital economy. A study conducted for Calgary Economic Development in 2019 forecasted that almost $18.5 billion of investment was going to go towards digital transformation from Alberta companies. And most of those companies were being led out of Calgary. That's right, over $18 billion. There's no question this investment will bring more opportunities and more jobs as companies move to a digital first environment. With that investment in digital technologies, we've estimated that we need approximately 77,000 tech workers across Alberta in the next few years. Now we have an impressive science and math based population with the highest number or highest concentration of engineers that hold a breadth of experience in these industrial sectors, but we have the lowest percentage of software engineers data scientists, coders, and programmers. As I said earlier, it's important to acknowledge the fact that Calgary and Alberta will always be a global energy center. From oil and gas, to from oil and natural gas, to wind and solar, to new opportunities in hydrogen, geothermal, we are a resource rich. We are also a top center for clean tech in Canada with more investment coming into Alberta than anywhere else in the country and the promise of much more. However, we must concede to the fact that even if we get a pipeline or two, secure investment and improve our regulatory process, our energy industry is just not going to be the mega job creator it once was. For the sector to sustain to succeed, it is going to have to be a leaner and more efficient industry. But as a leading supplier of energy and part of the solution for global climate action, there is opportunity in Calgary. And although it may not be the mega job creator, there's opportunity in lowering the carbon footprint for oil and gas and in other industries through clean tech while we focus on advancing renewable energy. Now back to digital transformation, it's no question that it's disruptive. 
and it will solve big challenges. And the people that work in oil and gas in Calgary are experienced in solving big problems. The opportunity now is to apply that thinking, not just to energy and the environment, but other global challenges. We expect to see opportunities for our workforce emerge across our economy. The evolution in all our key sectors has been impressive. We are seeing momentum with the adoption of digital technologies in everything from agribusiness to life science, to FinTech, to aerospace and in creative industries. Technology is the key differentiator in any business, but it still requires people. Our people will be the differentiator that will get Calgary ahead of the curve on the digital transformation. If we want these sectors to continue to grow and be globally competitive, talent has to be our top priority. It is why developing Trans transitioning and recruiting key talent, starting with Calgarians, is a top priority for Calgary economic development. Talent is the first pillar in our strategy, Calgary in the new economy, because our future hinges on building out our talent pipeline. In 2019, there was a 27% increase in tech jobs in Calgary. And we struggle to keep pace with the demand of these types of jobs today. If you are looking for work, we have a great job board on Calgary Economic Development's website with the opportunities from do dozens of local companies. Calgary has a STEM-oriented STEM workforce, so it's not exactly a quantum leap to go work in tech for many people. We've seen a sharp increase in micro-credentialing programs that are available through programs such as Edge Up, Evolve U, and Lighthouse Labs. Those courses are proving to be very important for displaced oil and gas workers looking for training to move into in-demand jobs in technology. Last fall, the World Economic Forum named our Edge Up program, our upskilling program to retain workers for tech as a path for cities to follow. It singled out Calgary and Singapore for our approaches to the workforce challenges of an increasingly digital economy. One of the big talent initiatives that was launched last fall was SAIT's new downtown digital talent hub. It's a smart investment focused on supporting companies that are preparing for the digital transformation. One of the reasons we supported the digital talent hub through our Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund is because it's a good option for people like yourself who are mid-career looking to pivot into technology. I strongly believe that the State Digital Tech, tech Hub is going to be a game changer in accelerating digital tech in Calgary. It is essential that we reskill people mid-career, but that we all that it, but we also uh, educate the younger generations and encourage them to stay here and tech, take, take tech jobs, not easy to say. <laughs> That's why it's so encouraging to see the number of tech training seats in post-secondary institutions in Calgary almost double in the recent years. Now we also have to recruit for some of the positions that we can't fill locally as the companies continue to execute on their business plans. Right now, those companies have more than 2000 job openings and are looking for more as they continue to grow. If it's not going to be the energy companies that fill our downtown office space and create jobs, then we need to look at other opportunities and apply our entrepreneurial mindset. I mentioned the $18.5 billion of investment in digital technologies and the venture capital money flowing into Calgary. And we're starting to see the impact of that investment. And one of the places it's showing up is in the dozens of incubators and accelerators from CDL Rockies to the Hunter Hub to Harvest Builders to the newly built platform that will open later this year. They have opened across the city to support the local entrepreneurs. We know tech will be one of the bigger job creators for the future and we're seeing it happen now. Every year, more and more companies are doing very cool things with artificial intelligence, machine learning, AR, VR, robotics, 
and more technologies. Furthermore, when Calgary Economic Development is recruiting companies to Calgary, they're often tech-related companies or a tech division of a company. Now, another proof point, we recently published a business confidence survey for Calgary, and it was notable that executives in our tech sector are much more optimistic than those in other sectors about the future for their companies. Two thirds of those tech companies said 2020 was a good year for them and their business, and that they're optimistic about the year ahead. In fact, we expect a tech boom in Calgary with the number of companies at least doubling by 2030. And all of those companies, the tech startups, the established businesses plotting, plotting their digital roadmaps and the new companies that we're attracting, they will all need tech talent. Now, let me be clear, the road to economic recovery will be long and bumpy for Calgary. There is no doubt that our city will look different in the future. But there's also no denying that we remain well positioned to grow and evolve and be the city of choice in Canada to solve the world's biggest challenges. We have an enviable lifestyle. We have a low corporate tax rate. We have an abundance of affordable office space for any type or size of business. But most importantly, we have super smart people. People who have shown a remarkable ability to take on the unexpected challenges and adapt to the new realities. The bottom line is, it will be Calgarians embracing the opportunities that will make the difference. We are, and we always will be a city of problem solvers. We have what it takes. And this is indeed an opportunity rich city. The pandemic and the recession and depressed oil and gas prices have taken a toll on Calgary. We will need all orders of government to work together and work with business to succeed. But there's no denying we remain well positioned to evolve and grow. Calgary has always been an entrepreneurial city and entrepreneurs thrive on challenges. It's why I'm confident our future will be what we choose to make it. Thank you very much. And I look forward to your questions. We have opened up the Q&A. Uh, you guys are welcome to type questions in, in the box at the bottom of your screen. Um, while we wait for the questions to come in, Mary, I did have one. Um, what can people who've worked in oil and gas for the bulk of their careers, if they're shifting to tech, what's one of the biggest surprises that they might have um, in these different types of organizations? Yeah, I mean, I think that there, it really depends on the organization. And I would say it's changed over the last few years. So I think the biggest change or uh, adaptation that people had to make is, is just the structure in, in which they work, uh, the compensation and uh, the culture. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, oil and gas companies, um, you know, we have, we have obviously a lot of big office space in downtown Calgary, and it was built on a hundred dollar oil. And so, you know, a lot of that office space, um, you know, people had, you know, great big offices and, and uh, were compensated fairly Fridays off. Uh, and the tech ecosystem, if you're looking at a smaller company is just not like that. You know, they're working in reduced space, often at a desk together, although, you know, post COVID or yeah. as we recover from COVID, it might be different, but, but, um, you know, and it's really, it's, you know, it's not, there's no Fridays off. It's really about a grind. So when companies are, they're trying to maximize productivity out of uh, employers, compensation won't be as great, but the reward could be really great. And so you've seen a lot of these companies, those four that I mentioned, billion dollar companies where employ and people that may have come out of the oil and gas industry but pivoted earlier have really benefited by being in those companies and uh you know have created their own personal wealth by being part of those companies now it doesn't mean that everybody's going to join a unicorn uh you know but the reality is is that we're batting batting way above our weight with respect to unicorns so you know we have a good success and we should be uh pretty confident about the future that we can build other great companies here 
Now, are there opportunities for those who are maybe not uh, not professionally trained, um, you know, like not an engineer or geoscientist? Are, are there still opportunities for those with a diploma or high school education or maybe some certificate programs? Um, and does that look a little bit different? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that there's there's it doesn't matter you know, if you're in HR or you're in sales or whatever the case may be, like, I think there's going to be lots of more opportunities. Um, and, you know, we're, we're looking at a couple of programs just to test people's aptitude to, you know, whether they're suited for digital technologies and or uh, companies. So, you know, I think I talked a lot about the, the science-based kind of jobs, but there's project management, there's sales jobs, uh, depending on the company. So there are uh, things that are that are uh, going beyond that, um, you know, but I would encourage people to take certificate programs, even if it's a basic coding and programming, if they're digitally inclined and have some aptitude there and haven't been able to pursue uh, uh, education before, this would be a good time, even if it is just a certificate program. So that does feed in well with a question that's come up here that says, uh, can you suggest uh, any sort of upgrades to skills that people could make while they stay working in oil and gas? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, uh, you, we've been really focused on, you know, I, I think uh, we've been really, really focused on kind of the displaced workers for sure with our EDGE app program, but there are a number of programs that were rolled out by the universities that are uh, more geared to people that have an education that, it, it, you know, it's not a quantum leap so that they can take uh, upskilling programs. So for example, going from a electrical engineer to a software engineer. And so uh, now a lot of those are 12 months, 12 month programs. And what I can't answer for you, but I'm sure somebody on my team can is, is that are they part-time or full-time courses? I think they have some flexibility, but I would leave that to my team to, to answer. So I, I will just add, um, Mary, we did do a, a recorded session that people can check out with eight different training providers, including Jeanette from EdgeUp. Okay. Um, and so people can check out that recording and each of the training providers does talk about if they have short-term, long-term uh, and what that looks like, so. Yeah, and I think the only other thing I would just say, I think if you don't want to do a full certificate program, like a 12 month program, I know that SAIT is offering uh, shorter term programs. And uh, so uh, I think there's lots to explore there. Definitely. Um, next question here is which tech in incubators in Calgary should you as a displaced oil and gas professional be connecting with? Um, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of them, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, it, you know, well, let me just talk about platform because they're one of our civic partners. And uh, for those of you who don't know platform, they are at the corner of 4th Street and um, no, on 9th Avenue and 4th Street. So uh, Kitty Corner to the National Music Center and Library. Uh, and right across, right beside Energy District. So they're right up against the railroad. And you can see a new building happening there. And it's a parking lot with a, a 50,000 square foot uh, facility there. And that place is meant to be a hub. And so um, uh, it, it, so it's gonna be, there's gonna be a lot of activity and probably the biggest one, but you know, there's great accelerators with Zone Startups, uh, which is also downtown, the accelerator, um, and if you are inventing something, then it's, you know, best to go through something like CDL Rockies, which uh, matches you to a mentor and also um, investment opportunities. Um, so, you know, there's quite a few. We have them listed on our website. So I would take a peruse of that and uh, just check out which ones do you think are suited for you. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, are there opportunities in the tech sector for engineers and geologists focused on the downhole side of oil and gas development for the past 10 to or 15 to 20 years? Um, and does the SATE training gear towards your specific role prior? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, geology, geologists have been collecting data for a long time. Right? So <laughs> I, I, you know, I think that uh, the SATE programs are definitely going to be geared towards that uh, and uh, was the question about education or companies or tech companies? You know, it, it doesn't say, it just says, are there opportunities in the tech sector? So it might just be. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's so, you know, uh, 
if you go back to that, and we don't have to do it today, but you know that slide that gave kind of a portfolio of all the things going in there, it's really easy to see what energy tech companies are, um, what energy tech companies are uh, uh, focused on. And so uh, I would highly recommend that we, we make that available for people so they can do some research on which ones are energy focused. Perfect. Um, with the changing energy story, do you foresee a lot of jobs in renewables or clean technology and biofuels? Yes, I do. And I, I would say a couple of things that are really worth noting. Um, first of all, uh, you know, I, look, at, I think we need to be proud of our heritage in the oil and gas industry. We have done remarkable work and we've done it better than most jurisdictions in the, in the world. And uh, I, I strongly believe that the narrative in this country needs to change. Uh, and part of that is, is that, you know, we need, I, I just got off the, the phone with the government of Canada today in the environmental uh, ministry and talked about the narrative needed to change and people needed to talk about all the good things that we've done for the environment in oil and gas, but also the opportunities we're exploring in renewables and clean tech. And so you can see by the way that the uh, federal government is structuring some of their funding, it is all geared towards clean resources. Uh, so lower carbon fossil fuels, carbon capture, uh, as well as renewables. So, uh, I, you know, if I was a betting person and I knew a lot about the industry, it's, it's the path that I would be pursuing is um, you know, there, biofuels, nuclear is, or sorry, not, not nuclear, but hydrogen is going to be a big component of uh, Alberta. And um, and when I say that, it's because we have a competitive competitive advantage in some forms of hydrogen. So uh, there's you know there's a lot of push for the federal government to pursue that in Alberta. Uh, obviously, clean technologies, renewables. Now, I, th I would say, you know, the one thing we have to acknowledge is, is there's just not the number of jobs in renewables as there were in oil and gas. And, and that's pretty self-explanatory with respect to uh, the deployment of infrastructure, et cetera. Uh, but there are great opportunities and there are companies that are growing. And as we well know, a lot of the traditional oil and gas companies are actually in that business with some of them being the largest wind and solar producers in the country. But we're also seeing big investments outside of those companies uh, in in particularly uh, solar. So, you know, I think there's, we're, we're so blessed in this province in the sense that we have an abundance of fossil fuels underfoot, but we also have an abundance of wind and solar. There's great opportunities for hydrogen, uh, biofuels, geothermal, uh, and potentially even nuclear, which seems a little bit further down the, down the line for me as far as, uh, the, uh, opportunities emerging to the front. So there's there's lots going on with respect to that. But you know, the fact that the federal government is putting so much money into this and there's opportunity for Calgary based companies to go pursue this is going to generate a lot of growth. There's another question here that uh, talks about economic diversification. And are there any other sectors that you haven't mentioned yet that have the potential to grow in Calgary specifically? Yeah, I mean, we we talked about the big ones, um, and it doesn't mean that there won't be other opportunities, even in pure thing, pure high tech opportunities. Th those will exist, right? I think the key is for us to make uh, build a, an environment where tech can accelerate here, and that we create a good business environment. So, if a high tech company decides to come here, then that will be great. Uh, we would not turn the door on that. But I think the places that people don't expect us to be doing as well are in areas like fintech, which, you know, uh, Solium is a fintech company. Uh, Solero is a fintech company. And we kind of, we kind of, uh, Neo is another fintech company. And we kind of punch above our weight with respect to uh, fintech. And part of that is, is because a lot of the professional services that service the energy industry are really good at financial services. They understand global markets, et cetera. So there's this little, uh, this, this, this simmering kind of opportunity around FinTech. And, and frankly, you know, we've been pitching all the banks across the country to say, you know, move some of your divisions here. And, and frankly, you should do it around di uh, your digitization or um, your digital roadmap. And so, uh, and some of them are being, you know, it's, they're seriously looking at it, but um, yes, in addition to energy, agriculture, 
uh, transportation and logistics, emerging opportunities in life sciences, aerospace, and uh, you know, our, some of our strong suit around fintech. And of course, creative industries. If you want to, I don't know if anybody saw, but we were ranked in the top ten of uh, in movie make movie magazine. So, uh, so that's a big thing for us. So, if you like the creative industries and you really want to make a big departure, then I I think there's uh, lots of upside uh, during there. That industry is growing actually at a quite quite a rapid rate because, gosh knows, post COVID or I would even say during COVID, that there's going to be high demand for more content. So, true. I heard Fraggle Rock is filming here. Yes, Fraggle Rock is filming here, and uh, we have lots of other ones in the hopper. So uh, really thrilled. We, we as Calgary Economic Development, uh, operate a $28 million film center. And uh, as I say, this, this third party ranking today was quite a feather in the cap, because a lot of people don't know that, you know, obviously, we've got beautiful vistas for film and television. But um, we also have won more awards, Oscar, Emmy, and Globe awards than any other jurisdiction in the last 15 years. So the crews are really, they're quite talented here. And, uh, you know, we really want to keep them here because it's the production, obviously, in places like Vancouver and Toronto is over the top. Uh, we don't have the same incentive program, but we're getting a much more competitive incentive program. So it's, I think it's why we're seeing some, some of this increase. So it's a, quite a big thrill to be part of that. Excellent. Um, will Edge Up be available in 2021? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> uh, so we are, I, I think, you know, a couple of things to recognize about Edge Up is, you know, I mentioned it in, in the speaking notes is, is that, uh, you know, we've been recognized globally that this is a program that cities should follow. And uh, just a real kudos to the entire team that worked on this project because, uh, you know, I think we we see the need, uh, you know, there's probably lots of lessons that we learned, but we are really keen to scale this program. And so we are working hard to get secure more funding out of the um, federal government who view this as a success. Uh, and, and frankly, you know, as I say, this is going to be something that every industry is going to need because people are going to learn and work in a different way. And Edge Up is a great example of how you can retrain people to um, to adapt to the rapidly changing times. You know, particularly right now, induced by technology. But you know, the, the future changes are are going to be nonstop. And so, uh, you know, we we're really hoping that 2021 we we will get it. We're optimistic. We haven't heard uh, we haven't heard yet, but we're working super hard at it. Perfect. Um, what is the major factor preventing companies from moving to Calgary? And if it's skills, what are the skills that are needed? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, I would say the first, first and foremost, and I think we all have a responsibility to ensure that whatever friend, relative, or uh, even enemy in another market, that we're all telling a really good story about Calgary. So, you know, I think the first hurdle we have to get over is the fact that um, perceptions of Calgary. And so that's both for talent and for business leaders. And so when it comes to talent, they pe people just don't recognize that, uh, you know, that there's, a, there's emerging opportunities here. And although we want to hire local people first, there are some jobs that we just can't hire them, retrain fast enough. And so, you know, you, we need a, you know, a small number of like senior tech people to help uh, even train on the job, do on the job training for some of the other people that desire to go into um, into technology. It's helpful for somebody that's pivoting in their career if they have somebody that's super experienced in it. So uh, we have to attract them and they don't think that there's anything else going on here in oil and gas because it's typically what plays out in the media. And so, you know, our team, our marketing team, along with other partners in the community are working really hard to change that narrative. From a business leader perspective, they always look at the uh, at uh, a couple of things. They they'll look at a tax structure for sure, and they'll look at the operating costs. But the typically the thing that they look at most is do you have the right talent, and do you have a pipeline of the right talent that we need? And so our story is much stronger than it was because we're taking all these displaced workers, trying to encourage people to retrain. Uh, trying to get governments to invest in, in, in creating more tech spot, spots across the system for displaced oil and gas workers, but for the younger generation. So it's coming, but it's, it's a, you know, this is a decade long project. And so 
uh, companies, um, you know, we still have lots in the pipeline. We, we've made some bigger announcements at the end of last year about companies we've been able to retain here that are like Lodge Link that's creating 600 jobs of which, you know, uh, two thirds of them are related to technology. We have other big announcements coming out about tech companies that are setting up an office here or doing a Canadian expansion here. But the, the, to, more often than not, they want to know about the talent profile. And, and we learned this, you know, we learned this early on when we, if for those of you who will remember uh, in, you know, 2017, we were very involved in the Amazon pitch. And, you know, there were 238 cities that competed in that. And when they called us, which we were surprised that they called us so early, but they liked our non-government approach and our campaign. And they said to us, look, at, you, you've got to take a look at your talent pipeline because you've got really super, super smart people focused on traditional industries and you need to build upon that. So whether it's retraining and or attracting people or opening up more spots in your post-secondary to build that pipeline, those are the things that you're going to have to focus on. And not just for an Amazon industry, right, or an e-commerce company, but for all of our industries. And so they're the ones who kind of hit us over the head about that. Sorry, I'm about to sneeze. Um, Okay. So there's a question here where you've pivoted your career a few times mm -hmm. um, and it can be very difficult for someone to take that step to pivot. Uh, what would you recommend to people that now need to consider a new career path? I, I would talk to people in the industry and, and talk to those who have made a successful pivot. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I cited the example of LodgeLink of, of a company that was an oil and gas service company who was pivoted tech to deliver on what they were delivering in the oil and gas and it, it the technology is not so impressive on the front end it's like expedia for work camps but the back end is pretty impressive with respect to consolidation of accounting principles it costs companies so much money to consolidate all those moving pieces in in work in workforce uh movement or work camps uh, but they're also going into mining and they're also going into things like uh emergency response which is you know in high demand uh, uh, higher demand than it has been in the past and also things like uh, mining forestry and uh, agriculture. So, so um, you know, I would talk to somebody that's actually made the quantum leap. Um, you, you know, I, I think people should remember that Solium that was bought by Morgan Stanley for a billion dollars 24 months ago or February of 2019, that a lot of those people that started and invested that company actually came out of the energy industry. And so they were displaced uh, at one point and uh, took their severance packages and invested in, in starting this company. And, you know, it's a, an overnight success that took, you know, 15, 20 years. Wow. So, uh, so, but there's lots of people around that have made the pivot in companies and people that have made the pivot. Um, I shouldn't say lots, like, I mean, in comparison to the number of people looking to make the pivot, it probably pales, but there are people. And so... I'd highly encourage you to use your network, pay attention to what's going on at LinkedIn and try to connect to some of those people and just say, I need advice. How do I do this? Um, so there's a question here about, is Calgary actively convincing companies to move here? But a lot of companies would like out of Silicon Valley. So. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good point. There's um, the, yes, we are. So we, uh, over the last few years, um, you know, we've been, we've been, we, we've had, depending on the year. So we've been trying to build, you know, be m way more uh, progressive and, and aggressive in, in achieving our metrics. And so, you know, I think uh, the year prior to COVID, we supported 89 companies and some of that's retention and expansion here. And uh, about 50% of it was attraction. And so, and you know, when you're rebuilding an economy, you got to start somewhere. And so, a lot of these are smaller numbers. You know, probably went under the radar. Probably the biggest employer was, you know, Amazon warehouse with for 750 jobs, which isn't well suited to, you know, the people that have worked downtown and professional services. So, uh, we're much more focused on kind of the bigger, what we call anchors and stars. And so, as an organization, we've been focusing on, you know. Uh, uh, creating greater ROI and creating more jobs uh, and going after larger companies. And so, as I say, we have lots in the pipeline. Uh, COVID put a real dent in people making decisions. And so uh, last year we supported 51 companies. 
Um, but, uh, you know, we have pretty aggressive goals with respect to the, the, the type of companies we want to attract and the, and the number of jobs we want to create here. But, you know, it, it's important to remember that Calgary has uh, enough office space to support a population of about 4 million people. So in uh, empty office space is a very intrusive uh, metric because you can see it every day when you're going downtown or wandering downtown or going for coffee or whatever people did prior to COVID. But the point being is, is that it's a long time. It's a long journey for us to fill that office space. And we did a study way back in the end of 2016 that said it was going to be a 15 year job. And that was with $80 oil and pipelines. And so we know that um, we're overbuilt for the size of population that we have. But the reality is, is we also are committed to pursuing bigger opportunities uh, uh, and that we're, uh, that we're, you know, Invest Alberta, the government of Alberta set up a, a, a crown corporation to support that work and we're going to hunt in packs. And so I think we're going to see a lot more wins. Um, and once, you know, the vaccine's going to determine kind of when people are making decisions. We've had companies that have made decisions, major brands that have put it on pause because of the situation. So, um, but we are continuing to go after companies in Silicon Valley. We're, we're, we have one that we hope to announce by the end of February um, that their Canada expansion is going to be focused around Calgary. Uh, so, there's, there's lots in the pipeline. It's just is, it is, as I say, it requires a lot more patience, right? And so, um, you know, there's gonna be the big job creators, but there's also gonna be this tech ecosystem that's gonna be creating jobs. So smaller environment, high growth, uh, really exciting. Uh, and, and typically Calgary based people that have started it. So there's two paths to go. Is it gonna be a new big company that you're gonna go work for? Is it going to be one of these tech companies that you're going to work for that are, are hopefully will grow fast, right? Atabotics is a great example where, you know, I met them five years ago when they were three people or seven people and there are 200 plus uh, people now. It's a bit of a different question. Do you know of any uh, low, low cost short term training options that are currently available that frontline oil and gas workers, the labor fo focused workers with low education or low tech understanding could take advantage of? Um, I mean, the programs that are probably best suited right now are if they're not technically inclined and, you know, I think that most of the programs we're focusing on are technically inclined. So there's, as they say, Lighthouse Labs Evolve U, which are, are typically lower cost. They're not, you know, thousands of dollars, um, but it's, and it's for jobs like coders and programmers, et cetera. So, but you'd have to have some technical aptitude for that, right? So um, I, don't, I don't know what type of job they would be coming from, but, um, you know, there is a, we have a, on our website, we have, um, we have a system that you can actually put in what your skill sets are and uh, that it will pump out kind of, you know, what are the courses that you should take. So it might be something you want to look at. And if not, then, you know, feel free to reach out to us and, and hopefully we can guide you. Sorry, I had myself on mute there. Um, the uh, so for people, we have baby crying. She's three. She's not. She's not a baby baby anymore. Um, so building on the last line of question about the frontline labor workers, uh, what about people who don't have an interest in technology, um, and and they still have a number of years of experience? Where can we, where can we suggest those people pivot to? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's, it, it, there's no, like, creative industries would be one that I would encourage people to look at. But, you know, I think some of the opportunities that would typically be available, right, so whether that be in hospitality, uh, etc, are just there, they've all contracted right now. So it's, it's a particularly difficult time. Now, if I were a betting person, I think things like uh, tourism, local tourism, and and even international. When we get a vaccine, that there, are, it's actually going to bounce back really quickly. I've worked in those industries, and you've seen nothing as major as this, but certainly world events that have you would have thought that it would have taken a lot uh, longer to return, and it didn't. Whether that be 9/11 or other, you know, SARS or whatever the case may be, so they tend to bounce back. 
quickly. It's just a matter of, you know, how fast we deploy that. But, you know, if, if people, there's lots of job grant or sorry, training grants available. Uh, and I would encourage people to go apply for some of those and, and figure out which path you want to do, potentially get some career counseling and, um, and, 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 and try to see if you can get a grant to retrain your, your skill set. You know, they're just, just on a side note with respect to hospitality, uh, you know, there's a lot of big investments that are going to be made in this community. So if you think about, uh, we have made an investment in a, in a new arena. Uh, we've made an investment in a tier one uh, world-class convention center. It'll be the second largest in Canada. Uh, we are pursuing a train to Banff uh, from the airport to Calgary to Banff. And so, um, you know, you have to keep an eye on, there, there's no sh short-term opportunities with those right at this present time, but there certainly are gonna be long-term tourism opportunities that will be created. And you'll see tourism strengthen as a sector because of those investments in those assets. And so if you uh, were to plan for the future, uh, you know, you might wanna look at maybe even doing a pivot into tourism or hospitality, which can be a very rewarding career, right? I mean, I came out of that industry and you know, get opportunity to, to go to a lot of places, but also um, leverage really good people skills. So uh, if, if that's the type of aptitude that you have, then I would recommend that. There's a question here about if there is uh, anything being done to get more industry participation for people. So not only getting the training, but getting some hands-on experience. Yes. So, um, a, a lot of the, even the Edge Up program has a capstone project where you get a hands-on hands -on experience to, to work on a project and hopefully that will lead to employment. But we're also looking at a, a more global program of work integrated learning. And so how do we get industry to provide, um, you know, apprenticeships, internships, et cetera. So people come out of school work ready, right? So if they are doing any kind of training, so most, most training programs will have a capstone project or a work integrated learning opportunity uh, because we do believe that um, any training program, if you're investing in a training program, then you need to be work ready you know, when you come out of it. So a lot of the programs are being set up that way and industry uh, is stepping up I think we need we need industry to step up all all across the board. I think there's probably greater opportunity, but I can tell you that we're pushing that with the provincial government. Um, they're they're doing an assessment of their post secondary programming called Alberta 2030, and work integrated learning is at the top of the list. We know the federal government are interested in investing in this, in in particularly in Calgary and Alberta, so uh, or in Calgary. So we're really keen on getting them to do that. But it, it typically you have to be in a training program to be able to do the apprenticeship or internship or capsule project. Um, there's a, I think this is probably our last question. We might have time for two more. Um, is there a specific plan to leverage Calgary's uh, underexplored immigrant talent pool into the tech space? No? Yes, it's a, uh, it's a good question. Uh, in fact, you know, we were talking with the Minister of Immigration this morning, and uh, we were talking about uh, how we help temporary residents become permanent residents. With, um, so there's, we're, they have a couple of programs that we're looking at that might be able to help with that kind of thing. Um, because, you know, in my message to the federal government today was is that a lot of the people, uh, not all, but, uh, you know, more than I'd like to, to, to see is a lot of the people came to Calgary as new Canadians. And so, um, you know, they came on the promise of an opportunity. And so we have a responsibility as Canadians to make sure that they can stay here and find a opportunity. So, um, so we, we, we talked to them just briefly this morning about, you know, are there programs that can help advance that. Um, if it's training programs specifically uh, about uh, for, for people that aren't permanent residents, then, then I wouldn't know that off the top of my head. But I, it's, again, another follow-up question that we could respond to maybe with my staff tomorrow if that's helpful. That would be great. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the last question here is, is there anything we can do as individuals to help convince more companies to move to Calgary? Just 
tell them how great you are, first of all, and uh, we'll do the same. But I, I think this whole, you know, notion that we all have a responsibility to be ambassadors for Calgary is really, really important. And so, you know, I would say to you, if you have an idea or a thought, or if there's a company that you're thinking about that you're wondering if we are pursuing, then please just reach out to us. Like we will take ideas from anywhere. And um, they, uh, you know, lead generation, uh, lead generation and how many, pe how many companies and how many leads you have is obviously an indicator of how successful you'll be in the future. And so uh, I would just really encourage anybody who has ideas to bring them forward and we'd be happy to pursue them, to research them and see if it's a worthwhile or a opportunity for a fit for Calgary. But take any of our assets, our videos, put them out on social media, tell the world about what a great place Calgary is. I mean, after all, we're the fifth most livable city in the world and the, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the first in North America. So, you know, there's lots to be very proud of uh, with respect to Calgary. And I know that, you know, like uh, when I moved here many years ago, I wasn't sure that I wanted to live here, but once you're here, you really know that you want to live here. And the sense of attachment and community is, it's in quality of life is second to none. And so we've got to really focus on creating jobs for those who have decided to choose to make Calgary home. And we take that job very seriously. So we need all the help. So encourage anybody to tell the story, give us leads, and don't give up. Well, Mary, thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, it has been extremely helpful and informative to hear your perspective on the changing industry and future opportunities in the workforce. Um, thank you very much. And thank you to Calgary Economic Development for being such an important partner in this event. Uh, thank you to all of our delegates. I hope you've learned a few things and gathered some resources that will help you move forward with pivoting your career. Um, you can visit the, career, or the Calgary Economic Development booth in the information hall if there were some questions that you had that, uh, that weren't answered today. Um, and I do know that there are a lot of resources there about what tech training uh, options are available. So that might be a good spot to visit. Um, and a last reminder to please download and complete your homework and we will see everyone back here tomorrow morning for day two of the Career Exploration Forum. Thank, Thank you so much and have a great evening. Thanks very much and good luck to all of you. Thanks, Mary. Keep well. <laughs>